Hello all, Jeff here with a new video, back on Gran Turismo Sport. This was a daily race from a few weeks ago, which was Group 3 at Spa. I thought I'd show it to you because, you know, this was a no, preferably a no-stop race, but I wanted to try the one-stop strategy with the Mustang to see how, he went, see how I fared. So let's go. So starting third here, so I didn't really know what to expect. Like, this was done like a couple of days after my live stream of um, Group 3 at Spa. Well, I thought I'd give it a shot anyway, and I've just stunned right on the apex of the bus stop chicane. They, and the game threw me really wide through the corner as well. So first and second have gone to an, got off to an absolute barnstormer of a start because of that. So now luckily, I still have a gap between myself and fourth. Luckily, I mean, and not only that with the Mustang, it is very, very good in a straight line. So it's going to be very handy going down Arrow Rouge, up Radion, and through to Kemmel Straight. So. That's probably the strongest part of this car, and not only that, the brakes are, are pretty okay as well, so you just have to wait and see what happens with from, with stuff like this, just wait for mistakes and go from there. So the Chinese guy's in front, but I'm getting close to second place here, so second is on. So I've done some races before this, and I was right up with the, the Chinese driver, so I, I knew I, I could match it with him. But we get right behind this Jaguar here, the um, old mate Batman, he's all over the joint, yep. He's getting a bit loose in that thing, um, but you know, seconds on the cards here, so we'll, we'll, you know, just persevere, wait and see if he makes a mistake, and we'll go from there as we go down to La Source. Nicely done there, and yeah, I mean, I'm not even thinking about fuel saving because I know I'm going to one stop, however, you know, it's very easy to cut Raddy on here. So, you know, you go down to Rouge, fine, Raddy on, but up the top of the hill, if you go all four wheels over the curve like I've only just done there, that is going to give you a penalty, sadly. So, five tenths, I'm going to, and because of where I've copped the penalty, I'm going to have to serve it the next lap. But, in saying that, I can still get Batman here, and, um, you know, and maybe I can pull a bit of a gap on him and maybe stay second. But time will tell as he just, just takes a bollard off the track as he does. But, um, you know, I thought, you know, when is the best time to make this move? Obviously not at Rivage now, but he is getting very fish Charlie. So, in moments like these, it's just better to wait for a mistake. Because as you can see, he's all over the joint. So, we go out of no name and I've got it. I've got a huge run on him, so I'm just, you know what, let's just get past him at Puon and don't worry about it anymore. Yeah, there was a bit of contact, I probably lost SR there, or actually I didn't, which is surprising, but anyway, as we go to the next lap, I'm in second, Chinese guy's pulling away, he's driving the Toyota FT1, he's, you know, he's got that, got that thing planted, and as you can see, I do have a fair gap between myself and third place so as we serve the penalty here I'm most likely we're gonna stay second and more likely than not that's the case yes it is so there you go still in second place so that you know could have been worse but I've, we've lost a lot of ground on the Chinese driver in the Toyota FT1 but anyway as we go to lap 4 I thought you know let, it's time to pit May as well have have some good tyres for the end of the race and see if I can do anything with them. Or oh, nearly tap that tyre wall on the inside, but it's fine. Uh, you can only use hard tyres here. So here we go, the LSEM boys, they're all ready to go. They're eager to get the tyres on, the tyres off. You know, at least all those that didn't get in the Le Mans Esports team, they're playing a role here on GD Sports, so get around them. They're doing a really good job. And I'd come out in sixth place. You know, well, seventh now, but remember, I've got fresh tyres now. So, you know, and, and I've got a bit more fuel. But in the saying that, I can just go all out from here and see what happens. As I nearly cut Ratty on again, but luckily it's okay. So, you know... We'll just have to wait and see what happens. Someone else, someone's going to serve their penalty. I don't know if we'll get, we'll get to them at um, Lake Home. No, we don't. But the Mustang in front, he's going to think about it. But nope. But fifth place, he is all over the joint. The Porsche 911, he's gone a bit sliding. I'm going to try and make the move. And there's contact. But somehow, we've both kept the thing straight. Losing SR, well, obviously. 
But as we go into Ravage, oh well, sixth place. We'll see how we go for the rest of the lap. As we fast forward to later on, the Chinese guy on the FD1 is in front of him, giving the other Mustang a tap. He's going really slow through Bronsamon. It's pretty much flat. But we go into the bus stop. And four flakes, well, the Mustang and Batman, they're both pitting. So that's going to um, promote me to third place. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens from this point of view. But we're making progress. Corey Mack in front. Um, I don't know how long he'll stay ahead because he might have to pit. But, um, you know, fourth place, we'll see if any of the guys in front pit. So let's see as we go into the bus stop chicane. Um, Corey Mack has decided to pit, so the Chinese driver in the FT1, well, he's back in front and he's most likely going to dominate this race. But um, third place is, you know, I'm still in third, but we start the last lap. Second place is on the cards here. Um, and we have to chase the pink pig. The car that won GDE Pro in, at Le Mans in 2018. Well, the pink pig, the classic, you know, that classic meme livery is out there. Doing a good job. However, it looks like he has tried the no-stop strategy and not doing the best job as I nearly cut Radion again. I'm pushing it very thin there. But we've got to run on the Porsche. The Porsche isn't that great in a straight line. And look at the slipstream. I'm, we're just going to get by him before we even get to Lake Home. Just like that. You know, move done. And, you know, and it's nice and clean as well. And I've got a bit of a gap on the Porsche now. So, you know, well, just looking at the gap, there was no, no chance I was going to catch the guy in the FT1. But you know what? We'll, we'll take that. We'll see if we can, you know, do even better with a one-stop strategy in the Mustang in other races. But for now, it's a second. You know, may as well celebrate. Got the fastest lap of the race somehow and gained a position. So, let's go. Now, the next race, I was quite clearly in a higher split because I'll be starting further back in the grid, like not even in the first couple of rows. So, I would end up starting in 12th position so this is going to be a challenge especially how spread out the field is I'm going to start before we even get to the bus stop chicane that's how far away you are and it's such a huge advantage to be up the front at, especially at Spa with these rolling starts as old man in the Supra he's just going all over the joint keep in mind that is a very oversteery car but still it is very easy to lose it out of the bus stop chicane especially when you're like come out of auto drive in the middle of a corner but anyway down through the source the super is still right by me so it's going to be a drag race to Eau Rouge but it looks like we're just going to have the upper hand on the super yes we do and it looks like it's slightly backed off I like just slightly glazed the fence there as we go up the Radeon oh he's, been, he's giving me a tap actually he is giving me a tap so it's on for young and old here as we go down to Camel Strait, we've both got Slipstream, but he does have a 5-10 penalty thanks to shoving me wide at Radeon. But look at this, three wide in the lake home. Surely this can't work. Well, <laughs> there's a bollard just going all over the joint, and I'm, you know, I'm down to 13th. But, you know, people have got penalties. He's got, this Porsche's gone by, but I'm just going to just send it at Rivage, so I'm back to 12th. Uh, the Porsche's not giving in here. Two wide to Rivage, but um, I end up making that move stick. As we go further on in lap one, just by, behind this Merc. Now, all along I was going the one-stop strategy, just going all out and seeing what happens. So, ran outside the bus stop. Can it be done? Oh, you know, break a little late. But I've got the inside for the last bit, and we've made the move stick, and someone is going to try and make a move on the Merc as well. While that Supra that, you know, was having all sorts of issues at the start of the race, the guy that gave me a shove at Radeon, I'm just going to just forcefully get by him at La Source. So we're down to 10th, and look at that! It's all on behind me, three wide! So they need to, you know, calm that down before they plunge down Eau Rouge. But anyway, um, as we go down Eau Rouge and up the Radeon, the Toyota FT1 ahead, well he's got a 5 10 penalty, keep in mind that's the guy that, I'm pretty sure that's the guy that won the previous race. So I could have had it if, you know, I didn't get penalties. But anyway, he serves a penalty so, 
we're going to go up to ninth. So, you know, it was a very interesting you know, first one and a half laps, that's for sure. Anyway, end of lap three into the bus stop. This Porsche is just going to just send it. And he's giving old mate a shove. He's giving the Honda NSX a tap as well. Oh, it is on. And, yeah, keep in mind, this is before they um, put that big tire wall there to stop people doing the Lewis Hamilton corner cut. This was a couple of weeks ago, but I wanted to show you these races because, you know, this is my first proper online races at Spa after my stream. Now, as you can see, this guy has got a three-second penalty, so... I'm not even going to bother trying to pass him now. And he just cut O'Rouge, so he's probably going to get even more of a penalty for that. But, um, yes, he has 3.5 seconds. I'm just going to get straight in his slipstream. But as we go down, Kimmel, well, see you later, mate. Because I'm up to sixth place. So he gained six positions. Not bad at all. And when it comes to the end of lap six, I thought to myself, you know what? It's time to the pit. Get some fresh tyres. Oh, get a bit wide at the bus stop, but still get, you know, just keep it on the track and keep it in pit lane. That's the main thing. Now, we are going to fill up because, well, we need to. Um, we're not doing the preferred no-stop strategy here. So here we go. Yeah, they see him, boys. They're all ready to go. Changing the tyres nicely. And we're going to get some of the, the fuel, to put the fuel in as well. Oh, mate, Yuko doing, doing his good stuff with the fuel rig. So here we go, the Playboy Roy Mustang back out there, and we are going to be in 10th place out of, after pit lane. We'll make that 11th, so, you know, whatever. You know, we'll see how many positions we can gain out of this. So the Honda NSX has got by, so we'll just have to see if we can get in his slipstream and possibly get 10th position back. Oh, got a bit wide there, surprised he didn't get a penalty for that. But look at the slipstream. Look how strong it is. We're just going to breeze by the Honda NSX. So we're back in the 10th place with well, one and a half laps to go. So we'll just have to wait. Oh, the Super has just gone for the full send. And then <laughs> I did not expect that at all. He just came from out of nowhere. Um, and yeah, and as a result, I've lost all my momentum. I'm down to 12th. That Honda NSX is back in front. So, and there's someone else behind as well. So we've got a, a nice little battle pack here. Oh, yep. Plenty of contact to be had, that's for sure. And we're getting, I've lost SR for some reason. I'll try to get by, but there was no room there. So I'm just going to have to stay behind him at Puon and just see what happens. And maybe, maybe it's best just to stay behind him until the bus stop because he is all over the joint. I don't want to be involved in, you know, his errors. Oh, there was slight contact there as well. I'm not even meaning to, to hit him here, to be honest. And the guy behind, he's just smacking into me as well. So it's just, it's all, it's just bumper cars right now. And you, you know, and if we got a yellow flag, I don't know what that's for. Oh, there you go. Someone has spun. So up to 11th now. And I'm right by the super. I've given him a bit of a tap, a bit of a boost. And the Mercedes behind, well, he's just going to capitalise on basically whatever happens. But as you can see, we've got a huge run on the Supra as it goes through Blanchemont and then into the bus stop. My plan was just to just to get by him. So we do that under the brakes. We get by him. And there's just the slightest of contacts. Punching him off. Oh, and we copped a four-second penalty for it. So while we're 11th, we're going to lose a ton of positions. The Super, you know, I don't know what that penalty was for. Maybe he cut radio on, but, um, you know, <laughs> I thought I had to move stick. It was just a slice of contact, shoved him, shoved him wide, and, and you know, deservedly so. We've received a four-second penalty, which we're going to have to reserve at the Kemmel Straight. So not the, not the ideal place to serve a penalty, but anyway... Everyone has to serve penalties there. Getting in this Merc slipstream, but it's all going to mean nothing because, you know, we're going to drop a lot of positions here. And old mate, the NSX, he's having issues. He must have been really wide through Radeon. But anyway, there we go. Serving penalties. Down to 13th place. But um, as we go to Stavio, the Honda NSX has just lost it. Wheel on the AstroTurf. See you later. It's a very oversteery car, that one, and by the end of lap 8, I ran out of fuel.
But it was enough to finish 12th, a very disappointing 12th, although it's where we started. So, you know, just left to ponder um, for the next race, see if we can get it, do any better. But as a result of all that carnage, my sportsmanship rating went down to A, believe it or not. Anyway, so the next race, because of my low sportsmanship rating, I'm starting on pole, very comfortable pole to be honest. So the old Playboy Roy Mustang, how can it go? And being on pole, you start actually on the main straight, whereas only two others do. So that is a huge advantage. And just look at the gap between myself and second. That's just the start. So, you know, my plan was, again, do the one-stop strategy. Just go all out and see what happens. Obviously, at a high rate, lobbies, you do need to do the no-stopper, but, you know... Just may as well give this a shot and see what happens, but um, you know, what can you do? Down a rouge up the Radeon, taken cleanly, yep, taken cleanly, nice and conservative, but you know, not much else happened there to be honest, but at the, at the end of lap five I thought, you know what, I've gone all out, let's just go in the pits and get some fresh tyres and get a bit of extra fuel. So here we go, again the LSEM boys, they're all ready, so you know, Oh mate, Gamer Logic, he's um, you know, he's on fire with Dirt Rally 2.0. He's ready to get the rattle gun going. There he goes on the right rear. They're all good. So we, you know, Yuko again, getting on the fuel pump. Give me enough fuel to finish the race. So here we go. Lollipop done. Here we go. Playboy Roy Mustang back out there, and we are going to be in full position again. Some of these guys will be no stopping, so they'll be going slowly just to save fuel. But um, at, at the end of lap six, I, I was right, right up with the top three. The Audi R8 in second, he's the side of the pit, so obviously the no stopper wasn't working for him. But the Aston and the GDR in front, it looks like they're going to go for the no stop. But um, time will tell if they um, you know, just go. Full defence on myself, and I'm just going in as hard as I possibly can through La Source. But um, you know, the GDR is a very good car in a straight line as well, so you've got to keep that in mind. Although it's probably a bit better on the brakes in the handling compared to the Mustang. Anyway, Overrouge, Radion, and I've got a huge run on him as we get to the Camel Straight. Um, he's probably thinking at this stage, well, may as well save fuel because we probably won't make it to the end. And that was as easy as that, to be honest. He's, you know, quite clearly saving fuel. And we're right up with the yellow Aston. As we go to Stavio, I'm right at him. So if I can get a good enough run before Blanchemont, maybe I can make the move stick. And plus I've got fresher tyres as well. So the Aston, he's, think, he's probably thinking, you know, you may as well go through, mate, because I'm trying to save fuel. And I think that's exactly what he did, because it looks like he backed off a lot. But um, that was pretty much all she wrote, and we just fade straight into the next lap. Pretty much perfect transition. But, um, you know, to, to their credit, the Aston and the GDR were hanging on. So good on them for that. Good on, get on, good on them for trying the no-stopper. Nearly worked for them, to be honest. But it would end up being a victory for the Playboy Roy Mustang at Spa. So there you have it. That's um, some racing at Spa for you on GT Sport. If you like the video, smash the thumbs up button, leave a comment, let me know what you think, and if you want to see more, subscribe and tap the notification icon. Anyway, this is Jeff here, and happy racing. Cheers.